Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week's video is all about the bad investment houseplants. Now I did make a video last week about the good investment houseplants. If you'd like to watch that first or after this, I will leave that in the description below. But of course, if you'd like to check out my channel and subscribe, if you're not already, I would love it if you could do that. I do have a lot, a lot of videos about rare plants. I'm basically a rare houseplant channel. So if that's something that interests you, then then please feel free to subscribe. So you might be thinking, what qualifies you to talk about investment houseplants? And honestly, not a lot. It's mainly experience based. If you do not know me and you're new here, hi. I own a houseplant shop known as the Rare Plant Shop, and I keep upwards of around about 7,000 aroids at any given time. I take care of these myself, and when I do take care of these, I'm taking care of anywhere between 10 of a given plant to 200 in one batch. So I have reasonable experience in buying, selling, predicting market trends, going along with market trends, losing money to market trends, and all the rest. So in terms of that, plus things like general care for plants, I kind of know what I'm talking about based on my own experience. I'm not a botanist, I'm not a professional, unless you count that as being professional. So similar to last week's video, we are going to cover some investment plants today and we are going to cover the plants that I think are not so good to invest in. But what makes a good or a bad investment plant? Well, I think personally it depends on a few factors that I'm going to define for you now. So the first factor is of course the price. This is the price that you purchased the plant for, also known as the buy-in price. The second factor is availability, which is basically how easy is the plant currently to acquire for yourself to start your investment journey. Thirdly, the ease or success of propagation. So is it easy to propagate? Is it very difficult to propagate? Will it die in a fire or will it be fine? These answers are important. Similarly, time between propagations, that is, if you cut your plant, how soon can you probably cut the plant again and get a good propagation from it? Obviously, we're going to talk about the market trend. Is it going up? Is it going down? Or is it the same? Spoiler alert, this video contains plants that are going down in the market trend. And I will get on to whether they're a good investment or not. Spoiler alert, I don't think they are. But I will get into the specifics of why I think that is as a category. So I'm going to talk about all of the plants in today's list with those factors in mind. Right, let's get started. As similar to the last video, some plants I have with me today, some plants I do not. This could be for a variety of reasons. It could be because I don't own the plant. It could be because I didn't want to risk bringing it here. It could be a few things, but we will see as we go. I do have some specimens to show you today. Again, just like my last video, guys, I want to give a super quick disclaimer and say that I am aware that not everyone buys a houseplant simply to make money from it. People do buy them to enjoy them. That said, I do think that considering your investment wisely is very, very important as a lot of the time, these plants are not cheap to buy. It doesn't hurt at all to think about the longevity of the plant from a financial perspective. That way, if you like, you can still indulge in the hobby whilst potentially making a little extra cash. So we'll start off with this little guy. This here is the Monstera Albo. Now, a few of you might have seen this coming, and I promise you I'm not going to rant about it this time. I've made a lot of videos on this plant. I've really slated this plant. Not the plant itself, but just the situation involving the plant. So to make it really, really simple, all I'm going to tell you is this plant is extremely available. It is artificially held back from the general public. Basically, what happens is the stock is propagated and propagated and propagated. The lowest quality variegates are sent out to other nurseries and to plant shops. This should explain to you, at least in the UK and AU, why you see really shitty variegates, basically, in shops. They won't have a lot on. They certainly won't probably have this amount of variegation on. This is just one of my own propagations that I found in my shop. And I would say it was it was decent, to be honest. I think a lot of people would be happy with that. It's average. It's good. But a lot of the plants that you see around are not so good. So that's just something I need everyone to be aware of. Do I like the plant? Absolutely. It's a gorgeous plant. I have no issues with the plant itself, but it's the investment potential that I may have an issue with here. So the price for the Monstera Albo is a little bit tricky because it varies quite a bit. In the UK, for example, for a one leaf cutting, it's probably mid to high double digits. However, for the USA, I would say it's more low three figures. So there is some disparity there. Now the availability, not including them being held back at supplier level, I would say that they were definitely available and you will find one if you really want one. Ease or success of propagation, I would say they were reasonably easy with or without an aerial 
aerial route, I would always recommend an aerial route just to make sure you have no loss. Time between propagations, you do need to factor in that the mother plant is going to revert to juvenile form when it is cut. It will go back to producing those cute little heart-shaped leaves that I'm showing you here without any splits in them. That's going to put your propagation time right up. That said, I think propagation can still take place pretty quickly after perhaps two to three months. Ease of care, these guys are very easy. Just watch for leaf burn in too much light or overfeeding. It can happen very, very quickly. And before you know it, you have to sell damaged stock if you've burnt your leaves. The market trend for these plants is going down, but I must say it is going down extremely, extremely slowly. At the end of the day, it is a classic plant and people are always going to want to buy it, right? It's just a question of the profit you can make. You will make some, but I guess it depends on where you are in the world. So is it a good investment? I'm going to recommend it's probably not a great investment, no. There are plants that are potentially better investments, even though they cost a little bit more to purchase. As a personal plant, though, I think it's gorgeous and I think everybody needs one. So the next plant or plants I have to talk to you about today, it's kind of three pronged, to be honest. And I only have two here to show you, but I wanted to include all three because honestly, it's all kind of the same thing. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a lot of the now uncommon, to be honest, anthurium. I have not done enough at the gym to hold these up. Basically, I'm talking about plants such as anthurium forgetii, which is on my left side, and anthurium crystallinum, which is on my right side. Similar to that, there is also the anthurium regal, magnificum, stuff like that all those kinds of aroids, they're in this entry. These guys, now don't get me wrong, these are wonderful. They're absolutely brilliant, but they are around an awful lot now. You should not struggle to get specimens as healthy as this. In some cases, I'd like to tell you that you shouldn't struggle getting specimens this size. I'm not saying this is a super sizable plant, but as you can probably tell, this leaf is easily the size of my head, if not a little bit larger. And if I just pick up the other one, this beautiful forgetty eye, you tend to find these smaller, but the crystals you should absolutely find bigger. You can find them nearly everywhere. I did mention this in my video last year, but I wanted to mention it again. So let's get into it. So the price. I think for all three of these plants, you should be able to pick these up for high double digits. Yes, really. Which honestly, in terms of a non-investment perspective, that is absolutely amazing. And I think these plants are finally at the point of becoming more affordable, which is always something to celebrate. The availability is super available, both wholesale and via private sellers. There can be a little bit of rehab time sometimes with these plants, but generally you should be able to find any one of these pretty darn easily. Ease or success of propagation, again, pretty easy. Anthurium can be propagated from a chunk of stem with no roots, which we like to call in the trade a chunk. You just need high humidity and you're good to go. Some sellers do sell chunks like this on their own, but I think to be honest, for a plant that you could probably just grow out from that with like minimal care, I think that's a little bit lazy. Time between propagation, it does depend on the plant. It could be four to six months from cutting a chunk of stem. Bonus points though, with plants like the Anthurium forgetii, as they are prolific poppers, which means that they produce their own babies around the base of the plant. So the forgetii is definitely, I would say, the fastest of the three. Ease of care, again, providing you have good humidity and not too much airflow, in my experience anyway, I would say they were pretty easy. Hence, they are, of course, super available now. If they weren't easy, they probably wouldn't be. The market trend is going down and it's gone down so, so, so fast in one year. So are they a good investment? Nope, 100% not. Now it's worth saying that I do eventually think people will stop buying these plants altogether and therefore wholesalers will stop producing them. But then I'm pretty sure that a couple of years later they will do the rounds again. So don't throw yours out if you own one. Try and hang on to it. You have no idea what kind of investment they could be in two to three years time when they kind of do their second wind. And I would say that's worth a shot. But investing in them now? Heck no. I want to take a moment to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an ad-free online learning community with literally 
thousands of classes across all kinds of subjects. If you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn, Skillshare is a great place to start. I was really interested in joining Skillshare because I wanted to find a way to edit my insanely large raw video files without having to spend hours waiting for them to render out. This one particular class was really useful for me. This is a class by Sean Dyking called Video Optimization in Adobe Premiere Pro, creating a smooth editing experience. As I do use really big raw files, it does take me a long time to edit and render them out. I watched Sean's class and he presented several options to help me get through my work much faster. And now I can edit and render my videos out so much faster than before, which means I can spend less time editing and more time having fun actually filming my videos. The best part about this is you can try Skillshare for free. The first 1,000 people to use this link or my code Kaylee Allen will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. That's enough from me. Back to the video. Next, we have a slightly surprising entry. I'm not going to lie. This is the Philodendron Linamii. What's special about it, you ask? Well, it is a crawler. You probably can't tell by the way I have it packaged right now. And the new leaves come in this beautiful pinky color. This one is hardening off slightly, I would say. So there is a little bit of green coming through that leaf. Sorry, it doesn't really want to focus. And the stems are also this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hot pink color, which maybe you'll see. Maybe you won't. There. Somewhere around about there you should see it. Really nice plants, but my gosh, has a lot changed since I put these on video last year. A lot has changed. The price on a Linamii is low three figures for a three to four leaf plant. Pretty much like the one I'm holding up. And that's pretty low considering it used to be high three digits a year ago for the same plant. Availability, it is somewhat available. There aren't tons, but they aren't impossible to find either. Ease of success of propagation, this one is very, very easy to propagate. They are crawlers, so basically they have lots and lots of roots and they should be on offer to you as these plants grow. You should be able to make new plants pretty easily if you just cut that stem into chunks. Time between propagation, I would say around about four months. So I'd say that's a little bit over average. Nothing to write home about. Ease of care. These guys actually aren't so easy. Originally, I thought they were easy, but I'm going to retract that statement here a little bit. They seem to be more prone to certain types of fungus. They won't pass it on to other plants, but it can creep up on you within a batch of these Linamii. The market trend, of course, is going downwards. They were actually released in bulk at one point, I believe by certain suppliers, which in terms of an investment plant, it's a bit of a kiss of death. Because when you do this, you're trying to preserve the high price of a plant, typically anyway. But you'll probably hear more about this with other plants on this list. Is it a good investment? I would personally say no. Due to the bulk release, it's not worth investing anymore because you can't really compete with what's on offer elsewhere. You're not really going to make much money. The next plant on my list I do not have with me because I was not prepared to take it out of the permanent terrarium that it lives in. If that gives you any clue, the next plant on my list is none other than the Monstera oblique. Now, this was considered the holy grail of all Monstera for some time. I think, in fact, it's always been the holy grail of Monstera, as people consider it anyway. Now, this plant, when it came out, when it came out, you know what I mean, plants are alive all the time. You get my point. This plant came out and it was selling at one point, honestly, sometimes nearly as high as 5,000. I think it dropped pretty quick to three and a half thousand. That's for like a three or four leaf semi-mature plant. Runner nodes and things like that were selling for about a thousand. Like this plant sold for a lot, but a lot has changed since then. So let's get into what's different. The price for a Monstera Oblique is low three figures for around about a three leaf plant. So again, pretty low considering it used to be low four digits back in the day. The availability on this, honestly, reasonably available. It won't take you long to find one at all. I'm sure you can hit up eBay, Facebook, Etsy, you will find one. Ease of success of propagation. Cuttings with aerials are very easy, as you might expect. To grow them out from a runner is a little bit more tricky, if I'm honest. So it depends on your experience level and if you're working with runners or just cutting from the mother plant. 
Time between propagation, again, it depends. It's probably around about four months or so, but it depends on whether you're relying on the runners. If you're relying on the runners, it could be as little as one to two months between propagations. It could be super fast, providing, of course, you can get the plant going. Ease of care, they do need higher humidity than most Monstera, and they're surprisingly feed hungry. This always surprises me. I would feed them once a month at least to keep them nice and green. Also, don't overwhelm them with light. Honestly, less is more with these plants. As you might expect, the market trend on this plant has gone way down, but honestly, I do think it's been a long time coming. This plant debuted itself in early 2019, and it's made a super beautiful steady decline since then. Is it a good investment? Again, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to buy it for yourself, maybe now is the time. Maybe now it's reached a pretty nice price. I would buy it perhaps to learn how to propagate from runners if that's something you want to get into. So there is a potential opportunity, but I wouldn't really say you'd make a ton of money from it. This next one is really interesting and it's actually quite a good case study in my opinion of how basically the production and the trend, the market sort of life cycle of a plant is influenced very heavily on some of the stuff that happens in the beginning. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. Now, these were considered, very much like the Monstera Oblica, these were considered basically the unicorn of Philodendron, the Holy Grail Philodendron plant. Honestly, I'd like to say that it always will be. I don't think the availability of the plant is going to, you know, affect that too much. I think it will always be a Holy Grail Philodendron. But very quickly, this plant went from having very low numbers in the wild to being mass-produced, and I mean mass-produced. Now, if I'm going to speak in terms of the suppliers, I would say that they're probably kicking themselves. So what happened with this plant was this plant got mass produced in huge numbers. Now, where I think the nurseries went wrong in terms of, in terms of maximizing their own profit was that they started to flex a little bit on the internet and they started to put all these pictures out. I may have one, I may not have one for you, of how many philodendron spiritus sancti they actually had. Long story short, this plant was sent out in the hundreds of thousands. There were an awful lot. As a result, people realized they weren't very rare. People realized just how mass produced they were actually becoming. And as a result, people simply thought, no, we'll just wait. Clearly, with that amount of philodendron around, the price is going to drop pretty quick. And boy, were they right. So what happened was, I think the price for a baby tissue culture plant dropped down to about... Did it start at maybe three and a half thousand? It quickly dropped to a thousand. Then it was quickly at about five hundred dollars. Like it dropped the hell down and it dropped down fast. Now, the interesting thing is, as of recording this video, they're not really around as much. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, but I sure as hell have. What I think is happening, guys, is I think that the, the manufacturers that are tissue culturing this plant are essentially hitting pause. So what I think they're doing is they've realized the market is becoming a little bit too saturated too quickly for what they would like for their investment and their profits. They are literally going, nope, we'll just stop selling them for a little bit. We'll just put them on pause. We'll put them out a lot slower. We won't release, you know, batches of say a thousand to some of these big growers. We will release batches of 20 or 10, or maybe they're not releasing them at all. So I think that's happened. And I think that is a deliberate attempt to try and preserve the market value of the spiritus and essentially keep it buoyant. And that is why I think this is a very good case study of what happens when you bring tissue culture into the production of a plant. Every time you tissue culture a plant and you make it known that it is tissue cultured and everyone puts pictures out of how available this is, the plant is probably going to have a very quick decline. A lot of people won't like me saying that, but that is genuinely just a simple observation and it's common sense. But let's take a look at how things have changed with the Spiritus and why I think it's probably a bad investment. Although, spoiler alert, you probably already know now. So the price on a philodendron spiritus sancti is around about mid three figures for a baby plant, which is still a lot of money. Do not get me wrong, guys, but it's not $10,000, that's for sure. Availability, as I mentioned earlier, they were available, but in my opinion, this is on a deliberate pause for the meantime. They are not super easy to get as of this video coming out. Ease of success of propagation. Honestly, honestly, not so easy at all. I've almost killed my mother plant, yes, mother plant, just from taking a cheeky propagation, which is unbelievably surprising. But there are a lot of reports out there of the same thing happening. A lot of people have lost their mother plants and kept their cuttings, which is horrific. 
time between propagation. I can't really say, to be honest, because it's so treacherous and I didn't want to cut mine again after that. Now, ease of care, they're actually not bad, to be honest. I think once you've got an established plant, it just behaves like a regular old philodendron. I don't think it needs any high humidity. I think it's fine. I do find my plant to be quite slow growing, but that could just be my specimen. I don't really know. I don't know if other people have reported them to be slow or not. So, not sure. The market trend on this plant is currently down, but I honestly think a second wave is due, due to this mythical hold that I believe personally this plant has been placed on. So it's up to you as to whether you want to engage with that or not. So are they a good investment? Though they are on pause, ultimately the growers in the top are in control of this, obviously. So I don't think it's a good idea to invest in this because of the potential market manipulation from the top. Yes, of course, you get that a lot with a lot of rare plants, but it particularly comes into play where tissue culture is concerned. I think if you buy TC plants and sell them on, in this case, you're a lot safer than cutting and propagating manually. Tissue culture in this case is just too too fast to compete with. The next plant I'd like to talk to you about is this little guy right here. He is a little bit crispy over here, but he's okay. The next plant I'd like to talk to you about today is the variegated Adansonia. And honestly, I think fans of the channel saw this one coming a long way off when they clicked on this video today. So this plant used to go for oh gosh, I don't know, maybe a plant this size, maybe $2,000, easy. Now it's at about 10% of that, way less than 10% of that, if I'm honest, way less. We will get into it in a moment. But for now, I just want to tell you a little bit about it. So the leaves are a little bit thin, so be careful about that. They are climbers, so you will probably want to pull if you don't want to propagate from this. If you do just want to propagate from them, I don't think you need to pull it personally. I think you can just leave it as it is and keep cutting it. That's certainly what I've done with mine. This is one of many of my propagations. I probably have maybe six or seven others at the shop. So I don't have a ton, but I only started this Adansonii from literally like a one leaf cutting, like three years ago. So I've done pretty well out of it personally. And I think I swapped that leaf for a oblique, a rooted oblique runner at the time. I think this was a long time ago. So I personally have got my money out of it, but I don't think everyone else would if they bought it right now. So the price on the variegated Ansonii is low three figures for a small two leaf plant. If you are super lucky, you might get it for two figures. I am not kidding you. Wow, this has been a fall from grace. Availability, very available indeed. I would be very surprised if you struggled to get one of these. I genuinely would. Of course, yes, it varies country to country, but generally these are pretty abundant on the market right now. Ease or success of propagation, they're pretty easy. They grow pretty quickly and they send out plenty of aerials. They hold variegation quite well, which is a bonus. Time between propagation is probably two to three months. Perhaps a bit less, you know. Again, they are very, very quick. Ease of care, again, very easy. Can you see why they're everywhere? They can burn quite quickly though. These leaves are very, very thin, so do not put them too close to your grow lights. The market trend is way down, and I mean way down. It is now at the point where this plant is pretty much an entry-level investment plant. So I'm not knocking that, I'm saying that's a positive. If you want to invest in this plant, if you want to test the waters of propagating variegated plants to sell, I'd say this has now become the ideal plant for you. So I'm cheating a little bit here in saying that it's a good investment for some, but for those not new to this game, for those not new to propagation, etc., then no, I don't really think this one will give you the return that you're probably looking for. The last plant I have to talk to you about today is one of my personal favorites. It probably always will be. It's lost a little bit of love, I think, in collections, but it's still a decent plant nonetheless. If you want to own one of these for your personal collection, I totally recommend. They are absolutely wonderful. They are very, very gorgeous. Full disclaimer, this is actually two cuttings in the one pot. I only had one leaf cuttings because I've recently done a propagation pass. So for this video, I stuffed two in a pot together. I also will explain what this is. This here is a runner, very similar to what you get with things like Monstera Oblica. So basically, if I were to cut these runners up and root them, they would possibly produce plants from these little points on the stem here and here. It is one of the methods of propagating these plants. The other method, of course, is doing what I've done up top, which is to just cut the nodes with the leaves on and propagate them the same way that you would a regular 
Monstera, say, Deliciosa. So it's the same thing. But I just wanted to show you this because it's so pretty, is it not? These don't get enough press, in my opinion. They just don't. I, I don't understand why people don't love these. I mean, I think people do love them, but I don't think they're at the top of people's lists. I don't know why. I think things like Ansonii tend to take over, but Ansonii can't really grow as big as this. And by the way, this is a small one. This is very, very small. This is very much in its infancy. These plants can get gorgeous when they get big, so one of my favourites. But is it a good investment? Tricky question, actually. Tricky question to answer. The price on a Monstera Escalator is around 100 a leaf, which isn't too much different, don't get me wrong, for the 250 for two leaves, which we had, I believe, last year. It's a very subtle change, but it is a change nonetheless. The availability, they are reasonably easy to get, in my opinion. This is one of the factors that differs from 2021 and that they were previously a lot more difficult to find than they are now. I think that's been the changing factor. Ease of success of propagation, very easy. Same as any other Monstera, get an aerial route and you are good to go. Time between propagation, maybe around about three to four months. Pretty similar to a lot of other plants on this list. Ease of care, honestly, I'd say they were very easy. They do appreciate a really good feed, like most other Monstera. So to keep them that lovely deep green shade, a good feed is needed and keep them away from those grow lights a little bit. Now the market trend on these is down, but I have to emphasize this is a very slow and steady decline. It is nowhere near the rate that some of these other plants have declined. They won't tank overnight like the variegated Ansonii, but I don't foresee that they will go up again in value anytime soon. So is this plant a good investment? Well, it's a little bit tricky, actually. It's not a terrible investment. It's just not a great one. It's one of the better ones on this list, so I guess it's up to you how you feel about the plant. You could go either way. There's still money to be made off this plant, but it might just not be the amount that you're looking for. And that concludes my video on not really the worst houseplants to invest in, but some houseplants that I don't think personally you would be safe investing in right now. Again, please take this video as fun. This is just my opinion and it's based on the experience I have. If you want to go and buy a houseplant and make cuttings of it and make some money off it, honestly, you do you. No one is stopping you. Just have fun with it. Do what you like. And of course, you don't have to buy a plant for investment. You could buy one of these plants or a plant from any other video and just have it for you and enjoy a plant. But both are absolutely fine. I just like to cover videos like this because I don't feel like many content creators talk about this and I do feel like I'm in some position to at least offer some advice based on some of the pitfalls that I've gone through in my time. Just please remember, there are no rules. Just have fun and enjoy houseplants. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you'd like to see the other version of this video, the video on the good houseplants, I will leave that for you in the description. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you could. And until then, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.